Well, among those caught up in the White Island disaster, more Australians than any other country. Among the missing, a Sydney family of four with fears for the welfare of the Langfords from North Willoughby, including Dad Anthony, Mum Christine and their children, Jesse and Winona. 33-year-old Jason David Griffiths of Coffs Harbour is in a critical condition in hospital. His friends, Carla Michelle Matthews and Richard Aaron Elza, both 32, are unaccounted for. Julie Richards and her daughter Jess from Queensland are among those missing, while Engadine locals Marion and Nick London are in hospital with injuries. And Lisa, her daughter, Year 9 student Zoe Hosking and partner Gavin Dallow, all from Adelaide, are yet to be found. Their family, among many, still waiting for answers. They did take the trip to the island, but it's the last. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether they got off, but... Um, as far as we know now, they didn't get back on the ship. We've got our fingers crossed and the only hope is that they're in the hospital somewhere. Well, among those injured, 31 people are being treated for burns, all of them in New Zealand. As you can imagine, the hospitals are overloaded and now authorities are expressing concern not all of those will survive. For the latest, Ruth Wynne williams is outside one of the hospitals where they're being treated. Ruth, good afternoon. We understand that some of the patients will now be sent to Australia for treatment. Davina, this volcanic eruption is putting so much pressure on so many people over here in New Zealand. Uh, hospitals, they are incredibly stretched. Burns units are at capacity and the recovery team, they are under huge pressure to get out to White Island and undertake what is an incredibly difficult operation. We now know eight people are dead and another eight people are still missing here this afternoon. 24 Australian tourists were out exploring this island. Some of them were incredibly close to that crater as that volcano threw itself into life. There is just a huge amount of work going into caring for all of those people and here's what health officials had to say here today. Additional resources that are needed and will be needed to provide the care required. This is likely to include the early transfer of several seriously injured Australian citizens who are well enough to Burns units in Australia. It is possible that not all of them will, not all of the patients will survive. Davina, we know some of these patients have suffered the most excruciating injuries that you can imagine and it is an immense task to take care of so many people who are just so badly hurt. But at the same time, the recovery operation is a mammoth task. We know there was a failed attempt here today to get a drone up over White Island to measure some of those gases. That gives authorities an indicator of just how volatile the uh, volatile the volcano is at this time. They will try to put a boat out again tomorrow and that will have some Defence Force personnel and some other people who know the island very well. They'll be accompanying police on that mission tomorrow. But at the same time, as you said earlier, a criminal investigation is underway. Serious questions are being asked about why these people were on this dangerous island in the first place. So many families grieving right now. OK, Ruth, thank you. And experts say there would have been little or no warning for those on the island, despite scientists noticing increased activity in the last couple of weeks. You wouldn't be going if uh, the uh, alert level was uh, higher than it has been. And they'd raised it because there was a little bit more activity, mud being thrown out, higher temperatures, gas changes, but nothing of the level of increased seismic activity or inflation, large inflation of the volcano. Scientists estimate there's a 50% chance of a smaller or similar size eruption in the next 24 hours.